What happens when a shoe crazy, lipstick obsessed, wine swilling, pasta slurping, single forever, about to get married, big city girl cartoonist with a fabulous life finds a lump in her breast? May 13th, 2004, which ironically enough was 11 years ago today and it feels exactly like yesterday. I was in my internist office, Dr. Paul Goldstein, because I was feeling a bout of bronchitis coming on, and I didn't want to be sick because finally, at 43 years, terminal bachelorette me was getting married in three weeks, and I didn't want anything getting in my way. So as my doctor was examining my chest, his stethoscope bumped into a lump. He looked at me and said, why didn't you tell me about that lump? Oh yeah, I said, what about that lump? Well, that was the lump that I felt a month ago, but I ignored it because I thought it would be the very thing that would stop me from finally having the love in my life that I have looked for my entire life, and I would have to come clean on my dirty little secret. And suddenly, an hour later, I found myself having to deal with that very real lump in a breast surgeon's office. And that breast surgeon, Dr. Christopher Mills, did a sonogram, and when he saw it on the screen, so the tumor was 1.3 centimeters, about the size of a large pearl. But when I saw the printout, I thought the tumor looked like a black hole. That was my aha moment. Pearls are symbols of wisdom, but I immediately went into that negative space. If my first thought was to go into the black hole, was my default thought always a negative dark one? Did I always think worst case scenario? Is that how I was wired? Well, maybe I was born this way. After all, I was born on the darkest day of the year, the time of the year when people's spirits are at their lowest and depression is at its highest. And what day is that? Christmas. I thought about my moody blue Saturnine Capricornian disposition, and I thought about how depression ran in my family, and that's something I was prone to, and mostly what I thought about are thoughts. And besides flesh, blood, and bones, and on a cellular subatomic and sub-subatomic particle level, what is it that makes you you and makes me me? Thoughts. You are your thoughts all 70,000 of them that you have every single day. You are your thoughts. Before there is an action, there is a thought. Your thoughts are what propel you into action. When you run into someone on the street, you think, do I like this person? Do I want to see this person? Do I even want to talk to this person? And how you feel about that person, what you think about that person will color your interaction. Good or bad, it starts with your thoughts. I became conscious of my very own unconsciousness. I had, like I'm sure many of you had, if you were diagnosed, is, is this the way you want to live your life wake-up call? I felt as if I was driving down the road of my life. The universe slammed on the brakes, took control of the wheel, stuck a red light in front of me, and forced me to stop, and not in a not such a subtle way and made me recalibrate my journey because my life was off course. It's not that I was a bad person. It's not that I was even a good person. It's that I was a person who was all about me, consumed with the superficial stupid stuff. Did I have on the right shoes? Did I have on the right outfit? It's not about what I could afford, but I tried. Was I at the right parties? Was I at the right places? You know, the typical New York City life. <laughs> 